Um, he was going to have about a couple hundred million pounds. And what did he end up with? Fuck all. He lost control of the company. He sold the company for 80,000 pounds. I'll say it again. He lost control of the company and he sold it for 80,000 quid. And who fucked him but our lawyer? The lawyer bought it from him. Which, if that's not a fucking conflict, I don't know what it is. But in London, in the city, or in Oxbridge, there's conflicts and then there's conflicts. <laughs> okay. There's conflicts and there's conflicts. So why is he on the wall? What? Uh, because he's got all the, yeah, a bunch of other shit. Yeah, yeah. But I know you guys, not you. Dan, you, you've obviously taken calculated risks, but you never pulled the bonehead move like that. No, 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 no. I, uh, well, I, I, when I rolled 82 million pounds, it wasn't one of the most intelligent things I ever did, uh, but uh, I was able to, then I was, uh, I always have confidence, okay, I put the money on the line, but I can sell my way out of it. And so, but I sold that 82 million pounds with uh, about a day and a half to spare, and I made 3,000 pounds profit on 82 million. That's not too much of a rate of return even in your business, is it? <laughs> okay. And then my two, part my two partners, Mark and Charlie, they owned, uh, I and 80%, they owned 10% um, each. And then, so I said, well, you know, we got 3,000 pounds here, you know. You get 300 pounds, you get 300 pounds. And they, well, they both said, no, you keep the money, Dan. <laughs> You, you, t you took the... And we went out and we had a big piss-up, which was about three grand in those days. We had a big piss-up. And, um, yeah, so... Um, but me, in hindsight, me buying the stock of Great Western when it was tanking. I mean, when it was going... It was, it was falling like a, a sharp knife. You know, how do you catch a sharp knife? And I just kept on buying with my own money. Um, the, uh, I just... I, I didn't believe that the institutional investors could be so fucking stupid. But I, I underestimated, I, I, I didn't, you know, you never know how wrong you can be. And even the big institutions, when the herd mentality starts on a stock market, I mean, there's no stopping them. Logic, not logic, but uh, facts that have nothing to do with it. And so uh, I'd like to have that money back, but uh, that's not going to happen. But, uh, okay, um, uh, step seven, what is your business worth? And pay attention to this, YouTubers. Uh, what the owner thinks he should get for it? Uh, no. The amount of money the owner says he needs to retire? No. But that's what most businesses go up for sale for. Um, what is your business worth? Correct answer. What the current market is willing to pay down to and including... Nothing. Nothing. Some of your businesses are worth not only nothing, negative. And I tell the story uh, many years ago, a um, uh, bright lawyer, partner of mine, Mark, we bought a refinery, excuse me, uh, they, they, we bought a refinery for them giving us $9 million, them giving us. We sold it back to them for, I think, 10 or $12 million, and then we bought it back because they gave us $5 million. So, the first stain? Oh, oh, you're first stain, yeah. Okay. Um, and because the business was worth nothing. And they needed to get it off the books. But you guys could never, George would never pay anybody money to take his company from him. Never. It's not, it's not in the cosmos. The, the, the stars could never be juxtaposed <clears throat> that George would think his business wasn't worth anything. Not only nothing, but I got to pay you to take it from me? It's not going to happen. Well, not just George, but probably everybody in this room. It's not just him. I like to tease him because he's Greek. But the, um, and because of my experience with the Onassis group, who I think I have a little better insight about the Greeks than most of you, because I worked with them for a number of years. But, um, so it may be not worth nothing. What is your business worth? More, speci more specific answer between three and ten times current annual post-tax profits, depending on the industry, the business, and many other factors. Now, some of the high-tech, Zuckerberg and those kind of guys, you know, 15, 20, 25 times, you know. And some of the businesses, like Amazon, didn't make money for years. I don't know if it makes money anymore no. or has ever made money. Okay. 
they're giving them the benefit of the doubt because they like the model. And if you're so fortunate as to find a business like that, fine. But the likelihood uh, is that you won't. So it, it won't be worth much. So, you know, three to, time, ten, three to ten times post-tax profits is about it. Remember, timing, to, you operate in a cyclical economy and market. Try to sell into an upwave. Sellers and their representatives invariably present financial projections having more entertainment value than educational value. Some of the numbers that you presented me in the last few days are pretty fucking funny. <laughs> as Sally would say, uh, and uh, Warren Buffett said that, uh, but they're pretty funny, humorous. Um, and because you're emotionally involved to the business. You're emotionally involved, attached to the business, as we've talked about quite a bit. Step seven, start, buy a business, build, puff it up, sell the business, repeat this process, and you will make tens or even hundreds of millions. There is no other legal way which you, does not rely upon luck. And for the youngsters in the room, you can do it, shit, five, ten times, fifteen times. For the middle-aged people, you can do it, you know, three to six, seven times. And for the old fuckers in the room, you ought to be able to do it at least two or three times. And I'm still swinging at the plate. I, uh, you know, I, uh, I will, you know, exit a few more before they, they put dirt on me. Uh, especially now that I'm going to be immortal. But if you don't follow step seven to get the fuck out, uh, step one through six is pissing in the wind. Some of you will say, I want to build a business for my family. I want to leave it to my kids. Oh, well, that's not my deal here. I'm, I'm not, I don't worry about that. All I, want, all I know is you, if you start it, puff it up, sell it, or take it public, and then do it again and again and again and again, <clears throat> you'll make a lot of money. You make a lot of money. Then again, for the YouTubers, I know money's not everything, but it's the only thing anybody fucking keeps track of since pyramid time. Uh, and in the infamous words of Andrew Carnegie, my uh, idol, my god of all time, uh, is that uh, when the financial, financial motive prevails first, everybody makes money uh, and um, everybody does well. Start up, cash the fuck out, and repeat. I'm getting awful high tech there, the yellow to the black to the yellow. Fuck. <laughs> I'm not sure how we did that, <laughs> but somebody did it. Okay. Any serious buyer will undertake their own valuation of your business. They will not believe your figures. Just like, for the most part, I don't believe your figures you gave me. Not because you were trying to bullshit me, I know that but just because you're giving me an optimistic view. You're giving me uh, a rosy view. Uh, you know, rose glass, rose colored glasses. Those are the steps. Summary. To achieve this, you need to, one, make your business independent of you. Two, make your business a turnkey operation. Three, pay yourself <coughs> and your staff first through good times and bad times. Four, puff Puff up the hog. Five, house clean your business. Six, sell your business, take it public or franchise it. And seven, repeat this process. You can do it over and over and over and over and over again. To create wealth in the tens or hundreds of millions, one, start or buy a business, build it up, sell it, float it, franchise it. Okay. Any questions on the exit strategy. Who do I see first today? Five, and then who's at six? I want to see, okay. Okay, who haven't I seen so far? Okay. Now, um, We've covered a lot of material. The, um, as I said, you're going to get the slides, but I wanted you to take notes. Actually, I, I had planned on not giving you the slides, uh, but then I looked around the audience, and I, I, you know, I'm an optimist, 
And I, I, I'm hoping that uh, you, uh, you um, a combination of taking notes and looking at the slides, uh, that's the best learning process. I know it is. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I was uh, feared, fearful that if you just uh, thought you were going to get the slides, you, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't do, utilize both, both uh, writing them down uh, for your own memory and uh, utilizing the, the slides. You're going to see when you get the slides, I didn't go through all 1,600 slides, 640, I think. Uh, the, uh, you know, I went through about 1,300, more or less, 1,350 slides, because some of the slides weren't applicable as applicable because of the sidebar stories I, I did, etc. But they're all applicable to you to study. Uh, and uh, when you go back uh, and you get your uh, <clears throat> weekly reports, uh, the weekly reports are going to be in the three sections. Your accomplishments for the week, section one. Section two, your goals for the next week. And section three, <coughs> your challenges and problems. You don't have to have challenges or problems. Okay? But if you have challenges or problems, you list them. They don't necessarily mean that you ask me questions. But if you have challenges or problems, what are they? Uh, some, some of you will say, I've got to double my effort. Some, I'm having trouble because I'm a cunt, or whatever, okay? Uh, and, uh, the, um, and within section one, accomplishments for the week, it's, it's very copious breakdown. And, you know, what did you do Monday? What did you do Tuesday? Did you do the affirmations, and etc. <clears throat> and I can tell, uh, you know, um, what input. If... I should, if any at all. If I just say, keep pushing at the top, you're in the right direction. I've said this before. If I say, uh, I know, I will say, see below, and I'll write within your report in big red font <coughs> my comments. Uh, but if you do have questions, put them in the challenges or problems section. You have questions. If, unless it's an emergency, I will not answer your questions until the next weekly report. And as I, I poke fun at you, you'll think that you have an emergency when you're not. But you'll think you're having an emergency. Uh, you, you can make uh, contact with me uh, through Thelma if you want a, you know, a call. And we'll make an appointment and we'll schedule them with Skype or whatever. <clears throat> if I'm in your area of the world, I'm uh, uh, assuming that I'm not fully booked, I'm happy to see you uh, to discuss uh, your deals. My, my schedule is always up on the internet, on my website. It says where I'm going to be, from what date to what date. Um, and so, um, but most of you, I mean, uh, uh, most of you, you know, uh, well, I do get to Greece, but I don't know when George is in Greece. But I mean, most of you uh, will, um, will not be in areas um, that I am, although I mean people like Jeff is have driven a third across the country to see me before, <clears throat> and that's fine. Um, I'm at your disposal for the next 12 months to make you sure that you have every opportunity to be a high-performance person and to be all you can be. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the game plan, and it's not a game plan, it's a war plan. And, uh, but I will address you as if that we are in the last two minutes of the Super Bowl. Bam, bam, every week it's the last two minutes of the Super Bowl. Not, you know, so I will, I, I will say the word, in the Stanley Cup, and Wayne Gretzky's driving down to fucking slap it in the net on you, Nick. Uh, the, and, and that's how I react. I react harshly sometimes when you ask me the same fucking stupid question over and over again. Um, the, um, but you will, I mean... And you ask me the same questions because it's based on you ha can't process the information. No matter how many times you've read it, you can't process it because it's so far out your comfort zone. It shouldn't be outside your comfort zone, but it is. So, uh, good luck to you. Uh, it's a matter of luck. It's good hunting. And tonight, uh, uh, make sure you... you uh, I'd wear underwear under your fucking kilt if I were you. <laughs> but you do what the fuck you want. God bless. Bye, YouTubers. Ahem. <clears throat>